Welcome back to Newsroom Newsbreak. India's Omicron tally is steadily rising with fresh, fresh cases of the variant being reported in Maharashtra, in Rajasthan and of course in the national capital. So far seven cases reported in Maharashtra, nine in Jaipur in Rajasthan and the national capital reported its first case when a man in Delhi was found positive with the variant taking the total count, the total number of confirmed cases in India to 21. Four of those cases from Maharashtra were uh, of uh, persons who had just returned from uh, foreign countries. Three of those cases in Maharashtra were people who had contacted had contact with someone who had returned uh, from abroad. In Jaipur, nine of our members of a family tested positive for the Omicron variant in Delhi. The national capital reported its first uh, Omicron variant case when one person who returned from Tanzania tested positive for the Omicron variant. Meanwhile, the number of cases of COVID across India seem to be on the rise. Karnataka saw four districts recording the highest number of uh, COVID cases. In Telangana, 43 medical students tested positive for COVID this week. And in the midst of all of this, the National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization is meeting today to decide now on COVID-19 booster shots. So all of this, uh, the concerns over the Omicron variant, the waning vaccine-induced protection against the infection, all of this has now highlighted the need for boosters to protect the most uh, vulnerable. Uh, while cases are now on the rise, this has uh, forced uh, this committee, this technical advisory committee, uh, to push up a meeting that was expected to take place uh, this week in the next few days to today, that is Monday to the start of the week. That decision was taken on Sunday. Now, while many countries have already started giving booster shots. Several experts, both nationally and internationally, have said that the situation in India is different, that the priority in India has to be different given that our a national, our large-scale immunization program began only about six to eight months ago. Well, for more on this, we have a panel of doctors, uh, pediatricians, rounded up for you. Dr. Anurag Mehrotra, the coordinator and the, of the Public Awareness Forum for Vaccination, uh, the chairman of the Sid Hospital joins us. Dr. P.S. Narang, the associate director of pediatrics at Max Healthcare. Dr. Shashila Kataria. Director and Head of Internal Medicine in the Department at uh, Medicity Medanta and Dr. Pankaj Anand, Senior Consultant of Critical Care and Internal Medicine at Fortis Hospital in uh, in Jaipur. So first and foremost, doctors, I want to get your opinion on whether we should go in for booster shots or mass vaccine, uh, vaccinations first. Um, Dr. Anand, to you first. Coming from Jaipur, where nine cases of uh, the Omicron variant have now been reported, uh, let me ask you, should India be prioritizing double vaccinating its eligible population against COVID over booster shots? Given the fact that we still have a large number of Indians still to get the base layer of protection against infections. Uh, Sarah, uh, it's not a very easy question to, to answer. Uh, of course, the first priority is to vaccinate as many people as is possible. Uh, however, we also have to keep an eye on the, especially with the Omicron now looking uh, largely on the horizon, we also have to keep an eye on preventing the lives of the immunocompromised and the first lines of defense, which are the healthcare workers. So, I think what actually is needed, we have enough vaccines in store with us at the moment. What has happened in, in the recent past, we have been a bit slack on vaccinating our population. So, it is a time more to actually focus on mass immunization, putting the engines back to the vaccination program rather than actually debating and stopping uh, boosters as well as the mass immunization. So I think both can go on together. We have enough vaccines at the moment available uh, and we have to put our focus back on vaccination. Put the focus back on vaccination. That is what we're really hearing internationally. We need to speed this up. But uh, Dr. Anurag Merotra, what can you add to this? You are the coordinator of the Public Awareness Forum for Vaccination at your hospital. In the aftermath of this new variant of COVID alarm, are you seeing, are you increasingly getting more... Uh, you know, questions of seeing people flocking to hospitals to inquire about this booster dose, whether they should go in for it or not, because I'm starting more, certainly hearing more of, of you know, these uh, conversations. And in that uh, case, how does, how, 
how do you identify a priority group? Is that easy for this technical advisory group? How do you decide what or uh, who uh, should the priority group be to whom this booster dose will be administered? Good evening. Uh, we are in the cusp of third wave. Coffee uh, time. We are discussing whether third wave will occur or not. Now we are almost there on beat because of a new variant. So, in preparing ourselves to meet this challenge, I think we must exercise on vaccinations. It is a good news that 50% of our population have been doubly vaccinated. But still, a large number of uh, persons are there who have not been vaccinated. The other part which you are asking is booster dose. I suppose the part of preparation, uh, the part of strategy, we must address the concern of our frontline workers, like doctors, like other healthcare providers, like okay. education persons, because they will have to tackle these things. And as a part of preparation, there is nothing wrong in giving the booster dose. Mm. All over the world, many of the countries have allowed this. In the US, they are going to allow to be in the person. Uh, around 18 years it also now there are large number of studies the studies came from Israel that involved almost 14 lakh of patients because of the observational study it compared the persons who took booster dose and those who didn't didn't take booster dose uh, five booster dose was given five months after the uh, initial two doses so there was significant difference in response the persons who, were, who got the booster dose mm. showed that less tendency for receiving infection, less tendency for hospitalization and that was also less. So there is, academically there is sufficient evidence, evidence to go for the booster dose. But as we, as for, as for we are concerned in India because we have a large number of population yeah. and our primary vaccination is not still complete. So as a part of strategy, we should emphasize only on the frontline workers and I was no, nothing wrong in giving the booster dose. There is enough evidence on the bench to, for that. And one the more thing I like to, like to convey, Moderna company which has given this MRN vaccine, they said they will prepare the Omicron yes. specific booster within the, by the month of March. And they are talking in terms of polyvalent vaccines for the different uh, the surveillance of uh, COVID uh, disease. So, uh, there is uh, no uh, academic aspect which says you should not go for this. And there, in fact, there is no harm in getting that also. Now, it depends on the national task force and this group what they decide on for this. Correct. And in fact, this uh, and, uh, has given the permission of the government to no more meeting. But later on, they will detect the website that what the expert will, will provide the information regarding this. Correct. Doctor, absolutely no debate over whether frontline workers should be given the booster dose. Of course they should. That is the topmost priority. Uh, uh, I think the concern is, uh, and, and again nobody is debating whether boosters are important, but given India's specific uh, conditions, given our population, given the number of uh, vaccines we have in storage, etc., what decision, uh, what are the challenges the panel is going to face in arriving unanimously at a decision. That's what we're uh, discussing right now. Dr. Kataria, uh, can you explain to us, you know, uh, is a booster dose different from an additional dose of the vaccine? I mean, I, I ask because, you know, we hear of so much, uh, we know we have supplies in stock. Boosters are important for the immunocompromised persons. When we have so much of doses available and we know that the third wave whether it comes because of Omicron or it comes because of any other variant, hmm. it is first going to hit and is first going to expose our frontline workers. So we must concentrate on uh, giving vaccine for the frontline workers. And we have seen that those patients who had the highest mortality or morbidity were the immunocompromised or the persons with comorbidity. So we must also concentrate on those. Now coming to the second part of the question, the mass vaccination and for the children. The, both the things need to be done because, you know, I mean, when children are not getting the vaccinated, the parents are getting the vaccinated, the teachers are getting vaccinated, still we cannot eliminate the fear from the parents 
that the children can still get infection when they come to school or to come to public places. So, the mass vaccination, when it comes, it will include those who haven't yet taken the vaccine, who haven't taken the second dose, and who have completed the boost, uh, both the doses, but once you have, then boosters can be given to the others as well. Hmm. After the priorities of children, after the priorities of the healthcare worker and the person with no morbidity. The aim is to complete and complete vaccination. And I must tell you, the additional uh, strains are going to be included in the vaccine, in the future vaccine. And maybe in the years to come, like the influenza vaccine, this may have to be repeated on a yearly basis to the new variant. But those who are vaccinated are definitely getting viral disease. So our priority must be to speed up the vaccination. That's, uh, Dr. Anand, we're back to where we started, what you said. Our priority right now needs to be speeding up the vaccination process. And I'm asking you this again in terms of prioritizing boosters or uh, vaccinating everybody because uh, isn't the fact that the more unvaccinated population that we have anywhere in the world, if you have pockets of these unvaccinated persons, it allows the vaccine to mutate and that is why we have new variants coming up. <laughs> exactly. So uh, the question is, as you rightly said, prioritizing. Uh, our, it should be now a national task. It should be on a war, war footing that we should complete the number of vaccinations that are not that have not been done till now. Remember, we are congratulating ourselves on actually vaccinating 50% of the population, but the other 50% is still unvaccinated and they are the ones who are prone to the severe forms of disease. It is now clinically proven world over that vaccines definitely save against the serious forms of disease, against hospitalization and against deaths. So I think what is important at this moment is a huge push to the mass vaccinations. One. Secondly, I would just like to add that remember this virus is as we've been repeating going to stay. It has an immense potential to mutate as we can see with Omicron and uh, it will keep on changing its form. It will be coming in the forms of waves, some big, some small and we will have to keep on innovating in most ways. But the basic principles remain the same. Get vaccinated, use your masks, use the social distancing. You can't run away from that. That is what is actually going to save this species on this planet. So as long as we have a 50% that is unvaccinated, whether it goes down to 40% to 30%, we will continue to be held ransom to uh, this virus because it allows it to mutate. Dr. Katane, I want to move now to the other important aspect of, uh, you know, the challenge uh, before this National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization. They also have to take a decision about uh, uh, coming up with some guidelines for uh, priorities for vaccinating children because increasingly now, you know, only the kids who are unvaccinated, does that make them more vulnerable uh, uh, to a virus that's out there? Uh, yes, there are many challenges in front of the technical committee. First and foremost, to bring out the procedure for child vaccination. I hope that should not be very difficult because we already have a very robust pediatric vaccination program. But still, you know, the nuances of that program has to be detailed. Secondly, coming to the idea of additional dose or booster dose, there are challenges known to give it. Should it be given in the same series as it was rolled out, like we had priority groups to start with healthcare workers, people with comorbidity, then the age criteria and all that. We do not have the luxury of time with this virus. So we can't be rolling it out for two months and by the time, you know, the pandemic picks up. Absolutely. Whatever has to be done to reap the benefits of uh, the program right now, we have only probably two to three weeks only. Because we have seen in the past the cases were, you know, like 21 uh, somewhere in March uh, also uh, and then how it increased to 4 lakhs I mean we have seen it happening Absolutely. in front of us so the window window is only 2 weeks whatever has to be done let's do it if we have sufficient vaccines then let's do a multi-pronged it's not this or this this is not a choice let's do everything whatever is possible in our purview we should do it and still if it comes then we should be ready with all the program of, you know, hospitalization, reducing hospitalization and managing those cases very, very effectively. 
couldn't have said it better myself, Doctor. We need to throw literally everything we have in our arsenal at this uh, virus right now, which is why we've seen the National Te Technical Advisory Group on Immunization, which was expected to meet later in the week, uh, advance its uh, meeting to today. Now all eyes on this uh, group uh, to see what decision they take. But thank you. All, all of you doctors for taking time out uh, of your busy schedules. Uh, we appreciate your service and we are grateful for your time. Thank you so much. We're going to go in for a short break. After that, we have the big story of the day that came in from the world of sport. A big day for cricket lovers, a big day for lovers of the game. Rika Roy will have all the news on that front after a short break.